Hello, Edu Magicians. Welcome to the Edu Magic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edu Magic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. Jessica Peresta, host of the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, Edgy Magicians, and welcome back to another episode of the Edgy Magic Podcast. My name is Dr. Sam Festich, and today I have with me an amazing guest, Charles Williams. Now, he has been on the show before. I think he's the only person who has been on the show twice. So I feel like there should be like a, an award given out because you have such great knowledge that you're going to share from lots of different perspectives, from a principal to an AP. Today's topic is interviews. So Charles, before we jump in to our episode, would you mind sharing with our listeners your teaching story? What brought you in and what keeps you going? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm honored uh, to be the first person to be on the show twice. Yay! Uh, so <laughs> thank you for having me. Uh, so, you know, it's it's. I think it's always interesting that as an administrator, uh, especially when I have new teachers coming in and they want to hear that story, right? They're always like, tell me how you got to where you are. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's that anticipation. And I always start off with, this is not what I wanted to do. Like uh -huh. <laughs> education was not my first career path. Um, and, you know, as we were just talking before the show, I think, you know, there's things are meant to be uh, and they will find a way. And, so, you know, my, my grandmother thought I was going to be an educator and she kept telling me I was going to be an educator and I kept pushing back with all my might and lo and behold, here I am. <laughs> um, but when I graduated from college, uh, I, it was a very practical move to begin with. Uh, I was a single father, I had two, two little girls mm -hmm. and I had two job offers. One was within the school system and one was doing public relations for a casino, but it was going to be a temporary position. A uh, six-month position, which would mean that it would go up until December. And so, you know, I was like, well, I can't go into Christmas not having a job, potentially not having a job. I'm going to take the job that I know is guaranteed. Uh, so I launched into the field of education, but more originally as a PR person. Mm. Um, now, I had a secondary degree in English. And so I was asked, hey, can you teach an English class? I said, you know, I think <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. And I fell in love with it um, almost from the first lesson. I said, this, this is phenomenal. I get to have so much fun, um, you know. And so, of course, I went back to school, got my master's uh, in teaching. And, you know, I've never looked back. And I think over time, what I started to realize was that when I was in school, I had a phenomenal experience. And it wasn't because I was great as a person. Um, or, or just special or anything, but I fit the mold of education. Hmm. And so I rocked it out. I was amazing at taking tests. I could read something and memorize it and regurgitate it, right? This archaic form of education, mm -hmm. you know, that we push back on, like I thrived in that environment, but I had a lot of peers who didn't. And I couldn't understand why, because I, you know, you're, you're smart, you're knowledgeable, you're skilled. But what I started to realize as an educator was that education as a whole wasn't designed for those types of learners. And so what I wanted to do is I said, I never want any of my students to feel like that, that they're not smart simply because they don't fit in. Mm -hmm. So I started designing and created spaces where all students could experience that success. And that has been my mission ever since, um, whether it was in the classroom or at the administration level or even beyond, you know, in the consulting work that I do, you know, I always want to make sure that every single student who comes into this space, because we say that they have the capacity to learn. So I want to make sure that they have the opportunities to learn. Now, yes. you know, we, we understand, you know, some students, you know, are not going to take you up on that opportunity. They're going to push back. I don't want to paint, you know, that picture. Like if you do the right thing, everyone, mm -hmm. you, you have those pushbacks, but I don't want that reason to be because I have failed to create that space for that student.
it. And so that is really, you know, I kind of fell into education, but that is what has kept me here for the last, what well, I think this is year number 17. For me. <laughs> Congratulations, year 17. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I have a question for you with this environment where teachers are looked at, I believe, in a negative light on social media and on the news. Why should someone who's going to college to be an educator, why should they continue this journey? So, you you know, you're absolutely right. And so I, I, I think if anybody's in this kind of pursuing this, first of all, thank you. Yeah. Uh, because I know that, you know, it's a t- tough decision to make. Uh, you know, we often tout like you don't go into education to get rich. Right. right. And so somebody has cognitively said, hey, I'm, I, I'm going to go into this, you know. And so I would say this is that there's a reason why. Right. We know it's not about the money. We know it's not about the fame. And, you know, there's there's a reason why you're in the program. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important to figure out what that reason is and ground yourself in. that. Um, you know, whether it's because you want to make a difference or you want to recreate you know, a wonderful experience that you had, whatever that thing may be, you know, ground yourself in it. Because as much as we complain about education, like nothing is going to change until we begin making those fundamental shifts. And the reality is there's many educators right now who have been around for a very long time who are not ready to make those shifts, who may never be ready to make those shifts. But they're also been around for a while, which means they're going to be leaving the profession which mm-hmm. means that we are going to need people, which we already do, <laughs> need people yes. to come into this, position, yes. this field who are willing to say, you know what, let's do things differently. Uh, let, let's push back. Let's change things up. And so like, if someone's in the program and I understand you see the attacks, you see the chaos, like there's a reason why you're doing this and we mm-hmm. need you. And, yes. and if nobody else is telling you that, like we need you. Um, in this space to make a difference because if, if if it doesn't happen, if those of you who are in the uh, programs right now say, you know what, forget this, I'm done. Like I worry about the future of education. And as we know, <laughs> that has far reaching ramifications. It's not just the teachers in the buildings, but it is the communities, you know, surrounding the schools. It is the, the to be honest, it is the country as a larger whole mm-hmm. because these, this is literally the future. Our future are in these spaces. And so if we don't make the necessary shifts, like we're, we're in for a big, for a big rude awakening. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad that you said we need you. Absolutely. We do. And in my opinion, teaching is the best profession on the planet. It truly, it truly is. Um, there's so much you can do with it. There's growth within it, not just for you as a teacher, but you can also see the growth in your students. Every day is something a little bit different and you get to keep learning. So those are three things that I absolutely love about teaching. And I truly believe it is the best profession on the planet. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Some of my best friends and some of the most awesome people that I know are educators. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's a great group of people because again, it's, we're, we're selfless right? The idea is like, we are here to make an impact on the world. And so when, when you find those like-minded colleagues, like it's just a great space to be in. It really is. It really is. So let's talk about the interview process. You're coming at this from the lens of a principal and an AP. So for our candidates who are listening in, they just listened last week to an episode about resumes and cover letters. Let's talk there first. What can make a resume and a cover letter stand out on your desk? So, you know, I I think a couple of things. I I know a lot of people are like, don't worry about all the fancy, flashy, you know, like Canva has a ton of templates and stuff like that now. Um, So I'll be honest, Mm -hmm. like those things do catch my eye, right? Like I know some people are like, don't worry about it. It's too busy. It's too much. But it does, it does tend to stand out. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing to do is highlight what you're able to bring into a school. Like, it's Uh great that you love to crochet, but I really don't care. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) unless you're starting a crocheting club, um, you know, I I want to know what can you bring into this space. So definitely, you know, go, go big on the student teaching aspects and what you learned and what you were able to do. I mean, again, you know, it's great that you had a 4.0 in high school or that you were like, the captain of your volleyball team or whatever it may be, 
And those things are nice, but I want to know when you come into my space, like, what are you bringing? Mm -hmm. Um, And so if you want to stand out, at least for me, let me know that. Let me get an idea of who you are. Now, I'm the type of person who I'm going to, you know, I want to grant the interview because I want to know you beyond paper. Right. But those are those things that I think would stand out to me, you know, the most. I, I've seen a lot of inner or a lot of resumes where they've listed all these wonderful things they've done in school. But I'm just like, I don't, what have you done in the classroom? Mm-hmm. Right. I like those, compa- you know, and then there's like a blurb, like student taught from, okay, so what did you do in that space? Yeah. And and maybe it's limited. Maybe you didn't have a lot of opportunities, but you've done something. So really highlight and maximize that section because that's what's going to be what skills are going to translate into the job. So yeah. that that would be my biggest thing. Like just make those those points stand out and you're going to catch the attention of somebody, you know, the recruiter or the principal or whoever it may be, because those things are going to be valuable to us. Absolutely. I like that. So really double down on what you've done as an educator through your student teaching, through your field work, share that story of what you've done and what you can bring to that, to that school or that district. Absolutely. So once you read the resume, you're like, Ooh, I need to bring this person in for an interview. What is, what is first, what's the interview process like? What are the steps involved and what are some things we can expect each step of the way? Yeah. So I, I, you know, obviously everybody approaches the interview process a little bit differently. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you know, there's, there's kind of the initial interviews, right. Getting to know the person, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person, uh, but it's making that connection. Um, And, and so what I would say to, you know, and I know some of this is classic information or knowledge, but kind of know where you're going. I've had a number of interviews where I've asked the question, like, why us? Why do you want to come here? Mm-hmm. And they they don't really know anything about who we are or, you know, it's very clear, like, I saw an opening, so I applied. And I'll be honest, it's really a like a buzzkill. Like, it's so offensive, you, yeah. Yeah, it's like, so you don't really care about being here. You're just looking for a job. Right. And I don't want you to look for a job. I'm hoping that you're looking for a career, first of all. Like, jobs are those things that you just kind of apply for haphazardly, you know, like... Mm-hmm. So, you know, making sure that during that conversation that you're making it clear why you want to be in that space, uh, you know, is going to be huge for me. Um, You know, I think the other part, what I would love to do, or and I've done this when I was in the principal role, is the interview. So I guess I'll explain it this way we get really good at certain parts of the interview process, right? There, there's workshops and classes on how to create resumes. There's yeah. templates. So like, it looks really good. Then we're, we're, we're trained on how to have a good interview, right? I come in, I look sharp. Mm-hmm. I, I drop all the right buzzwords, which by the way, if all you're doing is dropping buzzwords, it means absolutely nothing, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my thing is I want to see you in action. So One of the things that I've always tried to do as part of the interview process is I want you in a classroom. I want you in front of kids and I want you to demonstrate to me that all that fancy stuff that you put on the paper, all those great things you said to me in the interview that you can actually now manifest. Right. Beyond that, I also extend the offer. Hang out with us. Spend spend the afternoon, spend the morning, whatever it may be, because I want to know just as much as it's important that you're a good fit for us. I want to make sure that we're a good fit for you. Yeah. Because there's nothing like taking a job and saying, oh my God, like this isn't where I want to be. And now mm-hmm. you're looking for another, right? And we go through that whole cycle. But I'm also monitoring, right? How are you engaging and interacting with everyone? How are you engaging and interacting with students, with staff, with the front office, with the cafeteria workers? Because when we are building a, a, a climate and a culture within our building. I want to know that you're going to fit into that. Mm-hmm. And if you're being rude and dismissive, if you are saying, I'm not going to connect, I'm not going to like, then I don't know if you're going to be a good fit for my space. Maybe you're a good fit for a school, but not this school. Yes. Um, and so for my interview process, it's really about the demonstration. It's almost like what we do with students, right? Yeah. You could write all the good things down on a piece of paper, but can you, can you demonstrate it to me? Can you, show me that you really have the skills and the capacity to do this. So those are my interviews. Um, 
not not all interviews are that way. Right. Uh, but definitely that is the way that I approach it. Excellent. I love how you bring or give the candidates the opportunity to hang out at the school, observe, see if it's a good fit for them, because that's just as important as being a good oh, fit absolutely. as them being a good fit for you and you being a good fit for them. Yeah, I, th- I think a lot of times candidates have this idea that it's, it's one sided. Right. Yeah. And I tell people in the interviews, like, you're interviewing me, too, yeah. like, because I don't want you to come in here and say, well, this isn't what I thought it was. Right. When you're asking me questions, don't try to impress me because it's like you're asking the right question. I want you to ask the questions that you need to know, yeah. because like, you know, you might you might want to know what are what are the hours of the school and not just because. You know, for, but maybe you have a child who is somewhere and you need to know whether or not is this schedule going to work for me? That's right. a very real conversation because I've had employees who we have hired and then they're like, well, I can't really show up until this time because I got to like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Why did we not have this conversation? Right. Um, so definitely, you know, interview your potential school just as much as they're interviewing. I like that. And I think that's going to be the title of this episode because you've definitely um, hit that point home throughout this interview so far. So whenever we're going through that interview process, besides, you know, going through that, you know, checklist of do I look professional? Do I, um, you know, am I confident in, in showing up for myself for this interview? What are some other ways candidates can stand out throughout that interview process? So, uh, you know, I was thinking about this question earlier, and there, there, there's two things that came to mind immediately. Um, so, the, so the first thing is, uh, you know, having kind of a, a, a vision for what your role and how you would impact the school. We mm. don't necessarily want teachers to come in and just say, okay, well, tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. Like, tell me where to go. Tell me like, and, and I get it. Like, you may not know the intricacies of the building. You may not know all of that. But one, it's telling me you've done your homework, right? You, you've looked us up. You know what our, our performance data is. You know what's good. You know what's bad, at least what's been published. Mm-hmm. And so you can come in and say, hey, I think, right, this is what I can bring to your school. And this is what it would look like. And Sure, maybe it doesn't fit into the systems and structures that we have, but at least I know that you're thinking about what happens when I hit that ground and and I hit the ground running, right? It's, I'm not just sitting back and saying, okay, well, what do you want me to teach? How do you want me to teach it? Like, what is your plan? How are you going to be a phenomenal asset that we're bringing into our space? And so, you know, coming in with that and then as well as grounding what your conversations are. in, in data. So it's great if you said, well, Hey, you know, you know, I, I did really great in my student teaching. A lot of kids did better or they improved. Well, that can, do you have anything to Mm -hmm. demonstrate that? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you, you know, where, where's the data surrounding this and whether it's in the conversation or whether it's artifacts demonstrating what you've done, that's really key because again, there are some great interviewers, right? They know all the things, the right things to say. They know buzzwords they know it but i need to know for a fact like how did how did you do this Mm -hmm. what did you do and what were the outcomes even if even if the outcomes were not great you still demonstrate to me that you know how to you know collect that data you know how to reflect on that data maybe you've made a plan to say this didn't work out the way i had hoped but this is what i would have done differently those are the teachers I would take in a heartbeat over somebody who just sounds phenomenal because, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, you sound great, but do you, can you walk your talk? Right. And yes. that's one of the things I talk about a lot. Like I need you to be able to walk your talk. And so I've had interviews and I've had, te- you know, panels where they're like, what do you mean you're, you don't want to move forward? I said, well, cause they, they, they couldn't kind of get over that next hump of explaining like, yeah, you know, I believe in differentiation and I analyze data. Like, how? Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, that tells me you probably didn't do it. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Like, I don't care that you could tell me what to do. We all know what to do. I need you to be able to do it. And so those were my two big things, right? Like grounding it in, in actual data, having those artifacts prove that you could do the work. 
and having a plan. How are you going to impact that school? Yes. Oh, I like that. Those are those are fantastic tips to make us stand apart, not knowing not only knowing what is important, but how to execute that and how to do that. Show examples, show um, show data that you've checked out and what implications that has for your teaching, making those data informed decisions. Absolutely. I mean, it, right. That is one of it's like one of those buzzwords. We say it, we say it, we say it. But what do we do with it? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, as, as administrators and teachers know, more often than not, that's all it is, right? It, it's, it's a conversation piece, right? It might be something we slap up on the walls, but what are we doing with it? And yeah. so like demonstrate that you know what to do with it. Yes. I like that. Thank you. What about for our listeners who they're going through the interview process and they get to the spot where they have to do like a demo lesson or a teaching lesson? What strategies or tips do you have for them during that phase of the interview process? Uh, so uh, first, I mean, pick something you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know it may be like, well, of course, but I, I've had demo lessons where somebody is like, I'm just going to try this thing. Like, this is not the time to experiment. No, um, no, it is not. No, uh, like take that thing that you know that you are a rock star at and, and knock it out of the park. Um, you know, can you have some fun with it? Absolutely. Um, but this isn't the time to to try something new and to experiment. Uh, you know, I, I think going in with the understanding that like whoever's monitoring you gets it right? You, you haven't had time to establish routines and procedures. You don't know yeah. all of the students' names. You don't, so be cognizant of those things when designing your sample lesson. Like if you're going heavy on, oh, I need these kids to pass these things out. Like you don't know what the processes and procedures are in that classroom. Mm-hmm. So be very wary that some of those things that obviously take time to build can backfire. Mm. And, you know, otherwise be ready with a plan B. Um, Like it's, I, I, you know, I think the easiest way to say it would be to, to keep it as simple as possible and to highlight your, your understanding of like uh, your, your pedagogy, right. Your approaches to education. Um, Those things are going to go a lot further than demonstrating your processes and procedures. You know, it doesn't take much to, to introduce a lesson, right? It doesn't take much to make sure that you're doing checks for understanding along the way. Those are critical aspects, Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't take much to demonstrate, I know how to deliver content. I know how to make content uh, relevant or at least try to make the connections to students. And if not make the connections, at least explain why is this thing important? Those are all things that you can do without knowing the the people in your space, right? Mm -hmm. And that's going to demonstrate to me like, okay, you, you understand the standard, you understand the skill, Right. You understand how students are going to demonstrate that to you later on, Um, you know, and and those things can be flushed out when you get routines down. But those pieces are core instructional components. And so if you can demonstrate that, I think you'll be solid. But definitely do not experiment. I've seen that and it is it is it's rough to watch. Oh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'll be honest, and this is just me. This is the type of person I am. Like, I asked the teacher, like, have you done this lesson before? You know, and I've had them like, no, you know, I thought. And I said, well, how about this? Right. Like, let's do it again. Mm-hmm. But this time and, I, and I'm, I'm very just, pick out that lesson. Like, I know that's what you should have done anyway. I'm expecting you to teach a lesson that you've taught before. But it's like I'm, I'm, I'm looking for these critical components. And so I give them the opportunity nice. if they want to give it a shot again, you know, but not everybody's willing to do that. And so, really? you know, don't bank on, you know, second chances. Yeah. Yeah. When you first said not everyone's willing to do that, I realized you had meant like not every principal or interviewer is willing to do that. But I thought you meant no, not every interviewee is willing to reteach. I mean, it it, it, it actually goes both ways. Oh, really? I mean, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm surprised. I, I've... You know, which, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, cause sometimes you get a gut feeling and you're like, I think this is going to work. And, you know, I, I've had that, you know, where I've asked somebody to come back and then they just disappear. And I don't, I, I don't know if it's out of embarrassment. Mm. Um, you know, I get, and, and, and I don't want, I don't mean to sound like a bragger or to toot my own horn or anything, but I understand that my approach to leadership is different than a lot of others. 
Yeah. And so, you know, it may be that I'm saying that. And in your mind, your experience is like, they've already written me off. There's no mm-hmm. way I'm doing this job. Why am I even going to bother? Um, so I, I, I have had that. And I'm like, well, that's unfortunate. But, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm also not going to chase you down to no. offer a good job. No. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. Charles, as an author, a consultant, a speaker, an AP, can you please share all the ways that my listeners can connect with you and just follow you for all that great advice that you offer and the support that you offer educators in this very interesting world of being a teacher? Yeah. So um, you you can contact me almost across any platform. Twitter is the easiest one. And I try to stay extremely active there. Um, and that's at underscore CW Consulting. Um, I have the same space on Instagram. I believe I have the same space in TikTok, which now working with high school students, now they're like, Miss Williams, you got to get in these TikToks. <laughs> um, okay. So I do apologize if I come across your screen because I have no idea what I'm doing, but they're throwing me into their videos. Um, but you know what? You're reaching students where they are and you're connecting this- with them. This is true. And I am learning all sorts of dances. And I was going to say, your moves must be off the charts at those high school dances. <laughs> yeah, it's like now I'm not just standing on the wall, like I'm, I'm, I'm infiltrating, but I'm really right. watching. <laughs> uh, you know, and of course, uh, you know, there's the book on Amazon uh, in, inside the principal's office. There's a show the first and third Saturday of the month by the same name. Um, and then there's the podcast, uh, the Counter Narrative Podcast. And I've just launched something as a toy. I mentioned earlier, um, a spooky school stories. <laughs> uh, but my biggest thing is this. If you connect with me, um, I, I, I am a person who is reachable. And if you ask a question, I will respond. If you want to, you know, schedule a meeting and just pick my brain, I will be more than happy to connect. It, it is just, I've realized that people have done that for me uh, to get me to where I am today. And so I owe it to those you know, coming up now, you know, to do it for them as well. And so I don't just say this is lip service. Um, You know, if you really do find me and you connect, reach out, I am there for you because this is how we all learn and grow. We, We have to do this together. And so if I want my field to get better, I need to make sure that I am putting in as much as I possibly can. And so that means all of you listeners. So best of luck, by the way, in your future interviews or the interview that you're you just had, maybe you're listening to this afterwards and you're like, dang it, I should have. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for all the gems you dropped during today's episode from what is the interview process like? How can we stand out on our resumes and during the interview process? And especially during that nerve wracking teaching demo part of our lesson. Charles, it has been so much fun having you on the show again. And thank you so much. Of course, Em. It's always a pleasure. And um, anything I could ever do, let me know. You know it. All right, friends, you have a fantastic day. And remember, you have the edgy magic within you. Bye for now. And there you have it, edgy magicians. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For more edgy magic, check out sfesich.com and follow Dr. Sam on Twitter and Instagram at S. Fessage. Until next time, you have the edu magic within you.